We're on a road trip today. We've left Cuenca, Ecuador, and we're heading to Inca Pirca. Inca Pirca is one of the best preserved ruins in all of Ecuador. It's about an hour and 20 minute drive from Cuenca, or two hours if you take the bus, but you've got to get there early because Inca Pirca is so busy in the afternoon. So we got up early. We are now in Biblion, which is along the way in a dairy region. We're going to have breakfast here to make sure that we definitely get in today. just thought we would stop for a bite and actually we're having a very big meal. The Continental comes with scrambled eggs, tree tomato juice. We've got this bun here which is made in the Cuenca style with cheese. We have a tortilla de choclo which is a corn, sweet corn, a tortilla coffee. We've got some nata which is an Ecuadorian creme fraiche. We have some manjar which is like a dulce de leche. We also have the yogurt that they make here. So this is not just a cafeteria, but they also make their own yogurt, their own cheese, the nata, the manjar, everything here is made by these people. And so I'm so excited to try it. I am so excited to have this tortilla. So tortilla in Ecuador is a traditional breakfast food. It's either made out of choclo, which is sweet corn, trigo, which is wheat, or maiz, which is corn. So it can be savory. I actually like the choclo because it's just a little bit sweet. And then on top here, we have the queso fresco. This is fresh cheese that they make here. There are a lot of other ingredients that they make here too. I got the mango yogurt, which they also make. The manjar, which is uh, like a dulce de leche. And then also nata, which I had in Cayambe, which is like an Ecuadorian creme fraiche. So many great dairy products here. Mmm, that was good. Mmm. Choclo is a sweeter corn, but it's still not too sweet. This cheese is just a little bit salty, so it's like salty, sweet. So it's just like a thin tortilla. Different from tortillas in other countries, but still so good. The bread here is also from here. They make it in a wood fire oven, very similar to the kind of bread you're gonna get in Cuenca, and Cuenca is known to have some of the best bread in Ecuador. I just put a little bit of the manjar or the dulce de leche. It's just a little bit sweet, caramelly, I think. Mmm, mm -hmm. this is good. Not too sweet at all. It's actually very fresh tasting. Again, I don't like a sweet breakfast, but this is just a little bit sweet, just the right amount. The nata, which is like a crumb fresh. Mmm, oh, it's good. Actually, the nata will be really good on the tortilla. And then the, for the last little bit of dairy, this yogurt. So in Canada, I usually eat yogurt with a spoon, but in Ecuador, they drink it. Mmm, mmm. Oh God, that's really good yogurt. Yeah, you need to try it. Oh, this is mango yogurt, so smooth, creamy, not too sweet. This is my favorite thing. Just come here for the yogurt. I'll show you the brand of it. I got a whole thing. I might actually eat the whole thing. This is amazing yogurt. Yum. So Inca Pirca, as I told you, is like the most interesting archaeological site that we have here in Ecuador. It is known to be the best preserved one and the most impressive. What we're going to find here today is the Temple of the Sun of the Inca people. But also, on the other side, we got that uh, uh, ruins over there. That is the Temple of the Moon of the Cañari people. So this is one of the few places in the... Uh, in the and uh, Andean region that we get to see that two civilizations coexisted at a, at a certain point which are the Inca people and the Cañari. The Cañari being the original settlers of what 
nowadays is southern Ecuador. So the entrance fee into Inga Pirca is $2. Doesn't matter if you're a foreign or a national, it's $2 across the board, which I think is really nice, very affordable. It gets you entrance into Inga Pirca, the ruins, which are small, so very manageable to do in a couple of hours, the museum, as well as there is a hike. And if you come on the weekend and you're by yourself, you're not with a guide, there are guides here. So ask at the ticketing office because you might be able to join a tour. However, it's in Spanish only and if you aren't part of a tour there are lots of these um, placards with information in Spanish as well as English and Quichua so everyone can understand without a guide but you can see it's already starting to get busy we've seen a big group and it's a beautiful day so I think it's gonna get busier So when we talk about the Inca and Canary people cohabitating, coexisting together, this was actually only a period of 40 years because at the same time this was happening was the Spanish had also come to South America and they were beginning their uh, conquest of the continent. And so the Canary people here, what's unique about this place is that they were able to coexist. So they still had their worship their traditions alongside the Inca. So the Inca people certainly had enough respect for them to give them that. Whereas in a lot of the Incan empire expansion, it was, you know, join us or fight us. So in a span of 40 years, there wasn't a lot of time for Ecuador to adapt a lot of the cultures and traditions of the Inca people. And that's why you may see less of it here than you do in other South American countries. And the indigenous people here have their own regional traditions. So it's really a shame that more people don't know about the Canary people because they were building their civilization at the same time as the Inca and they occupied what we now know as southern Ecuador and northern Peru while the Inca were down in southern Peru, although they didn't know of each other at that time. They were great at architecture. They knew where to build their civilizations where it would be good for farming. Uh, they had a hierarchy, religion, and places of worship. And so very strong group of people and they still exist today in this region. And one of the interesting things about this is that they've recently found uh, a grave site with uh, multiple people in it. And there is some signs that this was actually a matriarchal society. So it was run by women. And that's actually not surprising given that uh, what they worshiped when they worshiped was in the Temple of the Moon. this is cool this is part of the Inca Trail you can actually see the gutter here and the road still exists the original Inca Trail was from Colombia down through to Argentina however with the building of cities and expansions really you can only see it in Ecuador and Peru but if you follow this road you'll get to Peru So what we have here is what they believe are Canary carved rocks that in the beginning when they first found them, they actually thought it was just like a pestle and mortar, but they now believe this is actually a lunar calendar system. Unfortunately, when they found them, they didn't identify it as a group because they thought it was the pestle and mortar. So we're not quite sure how they should be assembled. So what they would do is they would pour water into here and then the moon would reflect and that's how they were able to keep track of the dates. So the reason we don't know a lot about the Canary people is that during the Spanish colonization, uh, there was a lot of grave robbing. So uh, people would come, they would rob the graves with the treasures, also the artifacts, and then they would destroy the area. There was not really a lot of interest in finding out about the Canary people or the Spanish until the 19th century when archeologists started to come. And then in 1970s, when Quito was named a UNESCO heritage site, the government also became very interested in learning more about this. And so I would say this is in the last 50 years, um, a lot of work has been done. Unfortunately, a lot of damage was done too. So we are still trying to find out as much as we can about the Canaries.
this is the query of uh, the Temple of the Sun, and it's also for me proof that the Inca might have been alien. So look at these stones. They are so technically precise. Some of them have holes in them, and yet they were built 500 years ago with rudimentary tools. Like, how did they do it? I'm just saying. I also kind of believe that ancient Egyptians were aliens, so there's some food for thought. All right, so now we are going up to see the Inca face. There are a number of steps, and some people believe it was carved into the side of the mountain. Other people believe it was caused by erosion or natural elements, and it's about a 20 to 30 minute walk. I hope it's not all uphill. So we are very lucky because the big drops of rain, which felt like they were coming, are, I think, just turning into mist. And so this walk, which is 20 minutes, is just through farmland. It's so lush and green here. It's rainy season right now. And so of course, you can expect some rain in the afternoon, but it's just beautiful. So at Casa de Agave, I learned that it's a tradition for Ecuadorians when they go on hikes to actually put their name into the agave plant. And so this one, you can see tons of names. The eyes are like slanted because or squinting and then the nose is darker. I can see a face in that. That mist is getting in my camera. <laughs> so I have been doing a 30 day squats challenge, but it did not really prepare me for this. But I don't know what it would have been like if I haven't or I hadn't been doing squats for the last 21 days, but we're almost at the top. Oh, it's really pretty up here. Okay, I'm sad to miss this. On weekends they have chicha de jora, which is a fermented corn beverage. You could call it like a corn beer, but not alcoholic as like the beer. And then this is the Inca face right here. Yeah, I can see it. It actually does. The closer you get, the more it looks like it's a face. And even more prominent right there, the nose. It's almost like the plants look like eyelashes. All right, so we're almost done. This was a loop and we took the path to the right to go around the loop where the Inca face was at the end, which I think was the best way to go because some people just went right to the Inca face and then turned around, but then they missed all of the beautiful land that we walked through. So well worth 20, 30 minutes, something like that. All right, so this is Cascarita. It's different than Ornato that you'll get because the skin that they've got here, they actually blow torch. The first time I had it was in Yungia. It was amazing. Um, they can't blow torch it right now, but I'll show you some footage from Yungia because it's quite impressive. So a plate of this with a little bit of everything is $8. Right, before we start this meal, I have to share something with you. Did you know that 85% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed? So if you are enjoying my videos, please hit the subscribe button. It means so much to me. We're back in Biblion and we're at Señor de la Justicia. And 
In Biblion, there are a number of like roadside kind of diner spots where truckers would stop, a lot of local stop. And one of the most popular foods here is actually cascaritas. Cascaritas I had in Yungia. And while Hornado is probably the most famous way to eat pork in Ecuador, it's not the only way to eat pork. So cascaritas are cooked a little bit differently. The whole pig is first blowtorched. The skin is all blowtorched. It's taken off. It gets really crispy, just like this. And then what they do is they take the pork meat, they chop it up, they put it into traditionally a big copper pot with its lard, and then they cook it. And so it's almost a little bit like confit. Anyway, very delicious, but different than Ornato. So not all regions do this, but the Kenyar region is one region where you can do it, and this plate looks so good. It costs $8 for the pork, but we also have potato, sweet plantain, yapping gacho, I've got some molte, tostado, which is toasted corn, and of course, we have some ají on the table, and it's tree tomato, which is my absolute favorite kind. Anyway, let's try this meat. Mmm. Oh, so much flavor. Mmm. Andreas is already reaching across the table to try this. Mmm. A little bit salty, very moist because it's cooked in the lard. A little bit crispy on the ends. Mmm. Fantastic. Mmm. So good. So, so good. Now, here are the cascaritas. So this is actually pork skin. Pork skin is cooked differently all over Ecuador. I've seen it cooked so many ways. Sometimes it's puffed. Um, sometimes it's like this, where it's almost like glass. Mmm. It's like a, a crispy pork chip. Mmm. Really, really good. Now this is the first time I think I've had sweet plantain on one of my on one of my meals. Mmm, oh, it's nice. It's nice just to break up the saltiness of the pork. And then my favorite is the yapingacho. So yapingacho is like a potato cake. I prefer it when it's really seared on both sides. Like they seem to do that more in Cuenca, Wallaceo, also in Otavalo. This one is pretty good. I can't go wrong with potato, but I do love that sear. Now this ends our Inga Pirka Kanyar experience. So I really enjoyed the breakfast. That was fantastic. You definitely have to get to Inga Pirka early. I think going with a guide is a good idea. They do have those interpretive signs, but they don't really tell you a lot. And actually going with Andreas, I learned some really interesting things that I wouldn't have known. Otherwise, you're just looking at ruins and wondering, you know, what's going on there. It's only $2 to get in, so getting a guide is definitely worth it.